Hi and welcome back to Katie's Corner in Space. I'm Katie and in this video I'll be reviewing Star Trek Strange New Worlds Season 1 Episode 8, The Elysian Kingdom. This week's episode was different from the previous episodes, though still in line with the weekly adventure mold. However, it does address the issue of Rakia, Mbenga's ill daughter living in the sick bay transporter buffers. This week, we open in the Genesian Nebula. The Enterprise has been surveying and they are finished, ready to go. However, the ship seems to be a bit stuck. And while trying to unstick themselves, Ortegas is thrown off balance and is knocked out. So Pike calls Mbenga up to the bridge. Mbenga had been using this downtime to visit with his daughter before continuing to explore treatment options, but heads to the bridge immediately after Pike's call. Upon arrival, the doctor sees things are not as they should be. The bridge is decked out like a medieval castle, just, you know, on a starship instead of in an actual castle. It doesn't take him bang along to realize the crew are all playing parts from the book he reads to Rakia. He is a king, Pike is his chamberlain, and Ortegas is decked out like Sir Adias, who later we find out really enjoys a good fight. So our stories of the week are as follows. Rukia is still ill. The Enterprise and crew are stuck in a nebula living out a storybook fantasy and within this storybook fantasy they must locate the Mercury Stone. That'll be introduced in a bit, but if you've been following Strange New Worlds at all, you've already realized that is part of the story. After a quick ship systems check, Mbenga heads to sickbay assuming his research affected him. Sir Adias, Ortegas, follows. In sickbay, chapel is decked out like an alchemist, and the sickbay is covered in drying herbs, and it's just dressed like an alchemist home, really. Luckily, the regular tech is still available, and Mbenga is scanning himself with a tricorder to try and work out what's happening. Enter Princess Talia, aka Laan, who has a puppy named Runa, and the whole thing is just fantastically hilarious. I mean, of all people, as a princess, it's great. She and Mbenga chat about the Mercury Stone, a weapon in the story, and Mbenga takes the chance to scan her and her pup as well. Levels of dopamine are high in him and in everyone around them. Enter Hemmer, or rather being dragged away by the Crimson Guard is Hemmer. He's apparently a wizard in the story. However, he's not under whatever spell is happening. So King Ridley, AKA Menga, tells the Crimson Guard to let Hemmer go. They don't want to when they aren't under his rule. So off they go, dragging Hemmer the whole way. And Benga is still working out what is happening, but he knows he needs Hemmer. So a rescue plan is put together. Ortegas is ready for a fight and Laan is just ready to sing of their death. Again, just too funny. The casting for the parts for this is, it's great. I love it. Polox, the wizard, AKA Spock, shows up right about now wanting to lead them into a trap. Now Mbenga and his cohorts are captured by Queen Neva played by none other than Uhura, who, like Laan, is decked out in a fantastic gown, though her accessories are bigger and shinier. So they are captured as the queen wants the Mercury Stone. It's a big deal in the story, so of course the queen relegates them to the dungeon for future torturing. Here, Hemmer finds out Mbenga knows the story and how he knows it. And Mbenga learns Hemmer is unaffected because he blocked a presence. An entity attempted to enter his mind, but his training as an empath allowed him to block it. Thankfully, Hemmer knows magic, and with the magic word, he opens the door to their transporter prison. It's too funny. Science magic. Abracadabra. Oh, Hemmer, you are such a fun character. Freed, they head out. Spock, the wizard Pollux, is sent to retrieve them for the queen, along with some crimson guards. And this is when we get a bit of a battle. Some great sword play choreography, hilarious running away of the Chamberlain, fantastic entrance by Una Zamira, the Huntress, as she helps take out the Crimson Guard, Ortegas has been fighting. Once away, Hemmer and Mbenga get to engineering and start scanning the area looking for clues. What they find is a life form, but without a body. 
it seems to be creating the reality they are experiencing. Hemmer believes it may be a Boltzmann brain, until now a theory, and they seem to have floated right into it and it's creating this environment from a story Mbenga read. After some guessing and theories of their own, Mbega figures out the story is being taken from his daughter's mind, which explains why he's the hero and the story isn't quite right. But when Mbenga checks his daughter's pattern in the buffer, she's gone. She's been rematerialized someplace. There seems to be no record as to where she's rematerialized, but she's not there. Spock overhears the conversation about the doctor's daughter and listens as Hammer and Mbenga figure in this version of the story, Ryuka is the Mercury Stone, the special weapon the Queen is trying to find. He, of course, reports this to the Queen, who now wants the girl. Hammer helps Mbenga figure out where Ryuka most likely might be, his quarters, since she's been asking to see them. So they head out, but run into Pike, I mean the Chamberlain, and he's been turned by the Queen, so he attempts to stop them, trap them, be a general in the rear and with him is the queen and her guard the doc and friends are completely outnumbered and all they can do is hand over the mercury stone there's no way out except hammer who has powerful wizard powers of science he transports them out using a program communicator he'd found in sickbay once again the magic of science prevails Mbega finally finds Ryuka, and she's completely healthy. Her illness is gone, but like all magic, there is a price. Okay, I know that's corny, but seriously, every story with magic, there's a cost, and in this case, it's the loss of his daughter. Though not her life, the nebula can keep Ryuka healthy, but not as long as she remains in her body, or if she leaves the entity. And through Hammer, the entity explains this. And so Mbanga leaves it to his daughter to decide, should she stay with the nebula or, or go again into the buffer? She decides to stay, and even though she goes, seconds later she reappears grown. For her it's been years and she's already had many adventures. She's having a good life. Later the ship is back to normal, but the crew has no memory of what happened, not even Hammer. Only Mbanga knows the full story of the missing five hours. I loved Rakia's desire to change the story's ending. It's such a relatable feeling. Who hasn't wanted a story to end differently? It's so funny when Spock points out Pike jinxed them in the beginning. It's just a funny little moment to throw in. And I love the alternate characters and Pike playing the simpering Chamberlain was especially entertaining. But can we just take a moment and love this costuming and Leon as the princess was just as funny as Pike. Everyone was just fantastic fun. I completely believed Uhura as the queen. She played kind of evil well. I love the over the top gown. The ending was sweet, but I was not having it. There's been too much kids getting hurt in the season to prove a point and I'm sure it's my mom's status, but can we go back to fighting lizards? If Rukia hadn't popped back in seconds later, I'd be giving this episode the first real negative review of the season. But because of that bit, I'm going to add it to the list of fun and entertaining ones. So yeah, lay off the kids, okay? But keep throwing the crew behind bars because that's always funny. I'm seriously curious if we might see Entity Rukia in the future. Maybe she'll give the crew assistance of some sort. I feel like that story is open-ended and it's worth noting as far as I can tell only Una and Hammer would know who she was other than Mbenga if she did pop up later. The chit chat between Una and Ortega's characters was cute. It's like, I thought you were going to call. Well, I got busy, but I meant to. The chittering like that as a clue for Mbenga was campy enough to fit into the flow of the wackiness all around. Once again, I call this episode, at the very least, entertaining. Not thrilling or exciting, but funny and heartwarming. If nothing else, it removes part of the story arc for the season, well before the season's end, which is why I feel strongly this is not the last we see of Rakia. If not this year, then in the future. 
And that's all I've got for this episode, folks. I hope you enjoyed my review. If so, please give me a like below and go ahead and subscribe so you'll know when my next fascinating fan review will be out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to try out one of these videos. And until next week, bye.